Most AI stocks today trade at extreme valuations. Investors are willing to pay almost any price for growth. Yet one of the most important companies powering AI infrastructure trades at a valuation that looks stuck in the past. That company is Micron. And it is trading at a forward PE of just 8x, which is much below the industry median of 31 and far below many of its AI peers. This raises a very uncomfortable question. Is the market missing something big or is Micron still the same old cyclical memory company that always collapses after a boom? Analysts clearly believe the second story. Their models already predict a sharp downturn for Micron in 2028 and 2029. They already predict a period where earnings fall, revenue slows, margins compress and the cycle returns. In this video, I want to challenge that assumption. I want to explain why Micron looks undervalued compared to other AI stocks and what exactly investors are afraid of and why the old memory cycle framework no longer applies in the age of AI, cloud and contract driven demand. Micron carries a long and painful history in the stock market. For decades, it was the textbook example of a cyclical semiconductor business. When memory prices were high, profits exploded. When supply caught on, prices collapsed. Margins evaporated. Cash flow disappeared. This boom and bust pattern repeated many times over the last 20 years. Investors who bought Micron during the strong cycles were often punished when the downturn arrived. Over time, the market learned to treat Micron with skepticism. That skepticism has not gone away. Even today, analyst models reflect this thinking. Consensus estimates show Micron's earnings rising strongly through 2026 and 2027, followed by a sharp decline in 2028 and 2029. Revenue growth also slows or turns negative. The assumption is clear. Another memory cycle will eventually destroy profitability. This fear is the single biggest reason Micron trades at a much lower multiple than other AI related companies. So if you look closely at analysts projections, the story is familiar. Micron enjoys a few strong years driven by AI demand and then capacity expands, supply overtakes demand, prices fall, earnings collapse. This logic made sense in the past because memory was a commodity. DRAM and NAND were largely interchangeable. Customers bought based on price, not differentiation. When prices rose, manufacturers rushed to add capacity. That capacity came online with a delay and oversupply followed. The problem with this framework today is that it assumes Micron's business has not changed. In reality, this has changed dramatically. Micron today is no longer dominated by low-end consumer memory. Data center and cloud customers now drive the business. In fiscal quarter one of 2026, Micron's cloud and core data center businesses together contributed nearly 60% of total revenue. These segments also delivered the highest margins in the company. Cloud memory margins reached the mid-60% range, while core data center margins exceeded 50%. These are not commodity-like economics, right? They reflect premium products sold into mission-critical infrastructure where performance, power efficiency and reliability matter far more than price alone. This shift in revenue mix is one of the most important reasons Micron should not be analyzed like it was in the past. At the center of Micron's transformation is high bandwidth memory or HBM. HBM is not just another memory chip. It is a tightly integrated, highly customized product designed specifically for AI accelerators. It is co-developed with customers over multiple years. It cannot be easily substituted and most importantly, it is sold under long-term contracts. Micron has already locked in pricing and volumes for its entire HBM supply for calendar year 2026. This includes both HBM 3E and next generation HBM 4. That level of revenue visibility is extremely unusual for a memory company. 
This alone makes Micron fundamentally different from the past. One of the most misunderstood aspects of high bandwidth memory is how it changes supply dynamics across the entire memory market. HBM consumes far more silicon than traditional DRAM. Management has explained that HBM carries roughly a 3 to 1 trade ratio versus DDR5. In simple terms, the same wafer capacity that could have produced 3 units of standard DRAM is instead used to produce just 1 unit of HBM. As demand for HBM rises from AI data centers, a disproportionate share of total wafer capacity gets absorbed by HBM production. This automatically restricts the supply available for traditional memory products such as DDR and NAND. To understand why this matters, it helps to look at what happened in past memory cycles. When consumer demand for PCs, smartphones or other devices weakened, memory manufacturers still kept their fabs running. These fabs have very high fixed costs, so shutting them down was not economical. Instead, companies continued producing DDR and NAND and pushed that excess memory into the market at lower prices. This led to oversupply, collapsing prices and severe margin destruction across the industry. That mechanism is far harder to repeat today. Even if consumer demand for memory weakens, manufacturers cannot easily redirect capacity and flood the market with cheap DDR or NAND. Because a large portion of wafer capacity is now physically tied up in high margin long term HBM contracts for AI customers. That capacity cannot be quickly repurposed without sacrificing contracted revenue and strategic relationships. As a result, the supply of commodity memory remains structurally constrained. Not because the demand is strong everywhere, but because capacity is locked into HBM production. This creates persistent tightness across the memory market. This is fundamentally different from the past cycles where rising prices encouraged reckless oversupply and led to violent downturns. Another critical change is customization. HBM advanced server DRAM, low power data center memory and enterprise SSDs are not off the shelf products. They are built around customer specific requirements. Performance targets, power limits, packaging and validation are all customized. This raises switching costs and deepens customer lock-in. Even products that were once considered commodities such as DDR and LPD RAM now carry meaningful differentiation. Micron has been the sole supplier for certain low power data center memory products. That would have been impossible in earlier cycles. Long-term contracts reinforce this shift. Management has repeatedly emphasized that today's agreements are fundamentally stronger than past memory contracts. They involve multi-year commitments, specific volume assurances, and deeper integration across product lines. This makes revenue more stable and more predictable and the good news is this can apply to margins as well. Micron's margins today are not rising simply because prices are high. They are rising because the product mix has changed. In fiscal quarter 1 2026, Micron delivered nearly 57% gross margins. For fiscal quarter 2, management guided to roughly 68% gross margins. These levels already exceed prior cycle peaks. More importantly, management expects margins to remain strong and improve gradually through the years, supported by favorable mix, discipline pricing and cost execution. This matters because mix-driven margins are far more durable than cycle-driven margins. Another reason past cycles were so destructive was reckless capital spending. This time, Micron's capital allocation looks very different. CAPEX is rising, no doubt, but it is disciplined. Fiscal 2026 CAPEX is expected to be around $20 billion. Focus mainly on HBM, advanced node transitions and selective expansion of clean room capacity, the highly specialized factory space required to manufacture memory chips. New fabs in Idaho, New York, 
Japan and Singapore are coming up online gradually over several years, not all at once. There is no evidence of industry-wide overbuilding. At the same time, Micron is generating massive free cash flow, reducing debt and strengthening its balance sheet. The company expects to reach a net cash position and has resumed buybacks and dividends. This provides resilience that Micron did not have in past cycles. Analyst projections for 2028 and 2029 assume that memory demand will collapse the way it has before. But this ignores how AI changes memory demand. AI workloads require more memory per system, not less. Inference workloads which are becoming increasingly important rely heavily on fast memory and high performance storage. Enterprise SSD demand continues to grow as models scale and move into production. Even if AI spending growth moderates, memory content per system continues to rise. Each new generation of AI servers need more memory and faster storage to handle larger models and real-time inference. So even when growth slows, memory demand holds up instead of collapsing the way it did in the past cycles. When you combine this with contract-driven revenue, structural supply tightness and product differentiation, the magnitude of future downturns is likely to be far smaller than historical cycles. So coming back to the original question, why is Micron undervalued compared to other AI stocks? The answer becomes clear. The market still prices Micron as if it were a primarily a commodity memory supplier. It assumes today's strong profits will fade once the cycle turns. But Micron today looks very different from that old image. It now operates more like a specialized AI infrastructure supplier deeply embedded within long-term cloud and data center build-outs. A growing portion of its revenue is contract-driven. Its products are increasingly customized. Its supply is structurally constrained by HBM and advanced manufacturing requirements. And its margins are supported by mix and differentiation, not just short-term pricing. Of course, this does not mean Micron is risk-free. Memory will always have some cyclicality. AI spending growth could slow. Capital intensity remains high. Those risks are real. However, the old framework that assumed violent boom and bust cycles driven by reckless oversupply is no longer fully valid. If investors begin pricing Micron based on its role in AI infrastructure rather than its legacy as a commodity memory stock, even a partial re-rating towards other AI infrastructure companies could unlock meaningful upside. The real question for investors then is not whether Micron will face another cycle. It is how deep that cycle will be and whether the market is overestimating the risk. That is the debate investors need to have. If you found this analysis useful, consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. I focus on deep long-term thinking around technology and AI-driven businesses, not short-term trends. Let me know in the comments below whether you think Micron deserves a re-rating or whether the market is right to stay cautious. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.